Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is RET 120 Hydraulics. Today we're going to have a discussion on hydraulic pumps, some of the general characteristics, and then we're going to go into the specifics of one particular type of pump called the gear pump. Okay, so a hydraulic pump, what's it do? Its major function in life, it changes rotational mechanical energy, could be linear mechanical energy, but typically it's rotational mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. How does it do that? Typically, the ones what we've been using in the lab has a motor with a rotating shaft, electrical motor with a rotating shaft that is turning the shaft of the pump that is producing flow. That's what the purpose of a, of a pump is, provide flow of a hydraulic fluid okay um you don't always have a uh, you know trees don't always come with outlets so sometimes you have to have an internal combustion engine for mobile applications either way it's the same thing it's providing rotational mechanical energy to drive our pump okay um pumps hydraulic pumps are uh divided into two classes fixed displacement of which a gear pump is a fixed displacement displacement and a variable displacement pump the word displacement is a unit of volume how many units of volume per revolution Okay, so fixed displacement, and I know we haven't gone into our gear pump yet, but per revolution of a shaft, let's say it displaces two cubic inches. Two cubic inches per revolution. And we can't change that. That is in the pump's nature, is a fixed displacement. You cannot change that particular number and a manufacturer will give you that for that particular pump what i'm saying is you can't that that number will always stay the same how you change the flow from the pump is revolutions per minute so 100 oops per minute 100 revolutions per minute crosses it out crosses it out ultimately you get 200 cubic inches per minute, which we all know because one gallon is 231 cubic inches, just under one gallon per minute. Okay, so how do you vary the flow on that? Just spin it faster. So let's say we go crank up the speed on internal combustion engine to 200 revolutions per minute. What do we get for our flow? That's 400 cubic inches per minute. Just a, again, just under two gallons per minute. So you can vary flow with a fixed displacement pump. That is a, um, a concept that some people have difficulty with. A fixed displacement pump, you cannot vary the displacement as the name implies. Whereas a variable displacement pump, this displacement number here is not fixed. You can go from, let's say, 0 to 10 cubic inches per revolution and stay at a constant speed, which is pretty neat. It's an electrical motor. Let's say an electrical motor moves at a constant speed of 100 revolutions per minute times 100 revs per minute, we could theoretically get a flow rate from zero up to a thousand cubic inches per minute. Pretty neat, huh? Just by varying this displacement number. Okay, because again, if we wanted a flow rate of 200 cubic inches per minute, what we do is set our displacement to two cubic inches per revolution. If we wanted a flow rate of 400 cubic inches per minute, we would set our displacement to 
four cubic inches per revolution. And all the time, keeping our speed, our revolutions per minute. This is also written as RPM. 100 RPM revolutions per minute. Keeping that number constant. Okay, so variable displacement, you can vary flow by varying the displacement. Fixed displacement pumps, you can vary the flow by varying the speed at which it's driven. Okay, some general concepts um, to understand all pumps, either, either, either fixed or variable displacements. So the pump that we're talking about today is a gear pump. It is a fixed displacement, and it is always a fixed displacement. Let's go into the internal specifics of a gear pump. So a gear pump, obviously, consists of some form of housing. And the purpose of the housing is very much like your skin, is to keep all the goo that's inside of you from leaking out everywhere. And that's the same thing for the housing. And inside the housing is some internal components that are pretty uh, key. Quite obviously, what's inside a gear pump? The gears. Um, the gears are located, uh, this guy right here, this one on the top here, that is known as the drive gear. And how do I know it's a drive gear? This has got this keyed slot in it here, a key into which a shaft from a motor is input. And as that is driven around by the motor or our internal combustion engine, you now the key fits in that little slot right there, it drives that gear. It's the drive gear. So what is this gear? Well, if that is the drive gear, what is happening to the other gear? It is the driven gear. And this is also known as an idler gear. So idler. And don't be the person that tells me I didn't tell you this. Because like you've known, you've already seen already, there's a bunch of different names for a bunch of different things. A company that you may work for may call it the driven gear. Another company may call it the idler gear. Um, or may even have a special name for it. Okay. Um, where's the in and where's the out for this guy? The answer is it depends. Um, it depends in which direction the drive gear is rotated. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this diagram up real quick. Okay, so here's our clean diagram. And let's say the drive gear is rotating in this direction. And as a result, you guys have all taken mechanics. The driven gear is rotating in this direction. Now, one may assume that fluid is being forced through in this direction, and I am cautioning you to resist that temptation. And the deal is, the reason why fluid is not going in that direction is because fluid is an incompressible medium, okay? Um, if you stuck your hand in there, that'd be a different story because your hand is a compressible medium compared to the strength of these gears. You go ahead and stick your hand in there. A flat hand-shaped object is going to come out. Okay, um, again, fluid is in an incompressible medium. And so think about what's going on inside those teeth there. They're meshing together. And that volume so basically, there's no volume in that spot right there. So it's going to compress. And again, fluid is an incompressible medium. So it's quite obviously not going in that direction. So what does that leave us? Basically, fluid comes in here and gets inside these spaces, right? And is just ferried around and dumped off here. Same thing on the other side. 
Okay, so the general rule for um, any hydraulic pump, this is basically is called a positive uh, displacement pump here. Um, there, I, I kind of like to divide it up into a couple steps. And some books use four steps. Uh, I typically like to, and they, they have different names for these steps here. So I typically like to think of them as five steps. And what I refer to as suction, step one. It's sucking stuff in because look at the, as these gears teeth drive apart, it's an increasing volume. And if you have a volume here and it suddenly increases in space, pressure is lost and fluid moves into it. You know, it's a zone of low pressure. It's sucking in. So that's step one, suction. Step two, trap it. It's basically trapping that fluid inside those spaces in between the teeth. Number three, squeeze it. How is it squeezing it? Well, these teeth are being driven together, closing the space. It's the exact opposite of what's going on there. And earlier, it's basically taking that larger volume and it's trying to squeeze it down into a smaller volume. And as we know, pressure will increase and increase and increase. Step four, open. Fluid goes out this way. And step five, right here, seal. So a positive displacement pump requires that seal. Basically, there is no path between our inlet and outlet. So, and again, those steps one, suction, step two, trap it, step three, squeeze. Step four, open it. Step five, seal it. And again, that seal is from outlet to inlet. You can definitely get inlet to outlet, but you can't go from outlet. You can't go backwards. What it's happening is, is you just repeat them over and over again. Suck, trap, squeeze, open, seal. Suck, trap, squeeze, open, seal. On and on and on and on. So those are the five steps I like to use. You can come up with any other mnemonic that helps you uh, remember that. Okay, so um, specifically to the gear pump here is, again, the direction of rotation determines our inlet and outlet ports. So in our particular example here, if we were rotating in that direction, in was on this side, out was on that side. Okay, so here's your quiz. Here's a cross-sectional diagram. And here is another cross-sectional diagram of a gear pump looking the other direction. And again, what is this? That's the shaft. So let's identify. Here's our housing. Here's our drive gear. Here's our driven gear. Obviously, this guy's in. That guy's out. Which direction? Are the gear is the drive gear rotating? Okay, so the answer is it is rotating in this direction, which I think is the same as we had our earlier example. Yes, I believe so. Okay, so if I give you a direction of rotation, you should be able to determine in and out. If I give you in and out, you should be able to turn them in the direction of rotation. This, by the way, is known as an external gear pump. There's a bunch of different types of uh, pumps out there, of, of gear pumps out there. Um, the one I'm going to stress is the external gear pump. We're going to open up a couple of these in lab. Um, additionally, these gears, you will actually see one. We actually have one with uh, helical gears, just increasing the, the contact, um, surface contact between it. Um, one of the things I want to uh, discuss here is, again, this is a fixed displacement pump. And for it us to increase the flow, we would have to change the rotation of that shaft. Um, you can also replace the gears. You know, think about a gear that has a thicker tooth versus a thinner tooth you know, with more space. So you can change. Um, 
the displacement per revolution of these things, but again, it takes some hardware changes. Whereas a variable displacement pump, which we have not discussed just yet, um, you can do that using that existing pump. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, volumetric efficiency, and it's often called a pump curve. So for increasing pressure, here's 900 PSI, here's 1200 PSI, 1500 PSI. There's this phenomenon known as slippage. Um, obviously, as pressure increases, you know, just think about yourself, like lifting a greater weight, you know, lift an 80 pound weight. How fast can you lift it? Lift a 100 pound weight. How fast can you lift it? 200 pound weight. How fast can you lift it? So it's a pretty, pretty akin to a pump there. You can't expect a pump to have the same displacement for increasing pressure. So you will often see what's known as a pump curve. At different pressure ratings, there is a certain flow. Eight gallons per minute, six gallons per minute, four gallons per minute. And that is provided by the manufacturer of that pump. So if you are in an operation that's running, let's say 1300 PSI, and you need a flow rate of at least seven gallons per minute. Is the correct pump? Is this the correct pump for you? The answer is no, because look here, thirteen hundred psi, roundabout ish, five gallons per minute. So you might want to go to the Excalibur model, which is ten times as expensive, and it can guarantee you a flow rate. Of nine gallons per minute. Okay, so you can always exceed it. But let's say you need seven, you got to go and you want a fixed, you got to go with an even more expensive pump. Okay, so those are pump curves. And it's basically it's volumetric efficiency, you can you can think about is, here is its nameplate value of eight gallons per minute, and you can expect it to not be as good. All right, that's about it for our external gear pumps. Um, just a schematic time here. If you see a pump symbol that has no modifications to it whatsoever, it's a fixed displacement pump. Whereas this is a variable displacement pump, which we're going to go into next. One of the first of the two that we'll discuss.